Hey guys! Grab a drink, pull up a chair, and let's play at the bottom of the well. So this is an indie game that I found on Steam today. Oh, sorry. I'm just knocking everything on my desk. So welcome to the bottom of the well. This game is a visual novel, meaning it is a mainly text-based piece of interactive fiction, a book where you get to decide what happens next. Ooh, sounds interesting. Most of the game gameplay consists of picking your choice from a selection of options, which will further the story. Bottom of the Well does have some gameplay aside from multiple choice though, the most important of which is the kind of Alice, our protagonist, you are going to play. For your first playthrough, we recommend you use the default Alice, but the customization is there to be used. Even if you complete the game, a different Alice might have a very different experience. If nothing else, you might just find a new way to die. Thank you for playing our game. So I'm really excited. This is currently a free-to-play game on Steam, and I was just poking, I got off work, I was poking around Steam, and this looked really interesting. So let's play as the default Alice. Um, capable of finishing the game to its true ending, but not necessarily through all its branches. This Alice is career-motivated, friendly, somewhat lazy, a hopeless romantic, with no survival skills at all. She makes up for it by being a good organizer. Accept and start. Dream Diary. Today I had the weirdest dream in my life. I'm waiting for Joe to come online so I can talk to him. Morning, A. Asleep? Oh, come on, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, come on. Alice in Wonderland is like our favorite. Let me finish. Something happened. I was turning in my on my radio. You're such a Luddite. Amazing I can even catch you online. Shut up. I'm not a Luddite. I just like analog things. Anyway, I was tuning into the broadcast and I must have hit the AM switch or something because suddenly the channel changed to something else. What? Aliens? Uh-oh. Government run numbers stations? No, it was weird. Like, white noise at first. It's hard to explain why I was so drawn to it. I could hear snippets of some melody, maybe lyrics, but the signal was weak. So you turned it off and continued to and continued looking for the Alice broadcast? So I went out on my balcony, turned the antenna around, until the signal came through clear. It now sounded more like music with the odd signal in the background. When logic and proportion have fallen sloppy dead, and the white knight is talking backwards, and the red king is off with her head. Oh, so somebody's pirate radio broadcast of golden oldies. It felt like there was something else there, some message that the music was hiding. I know it sounds weird, and then I fell asleep. What a story. No, hear me out. I dreamed, and I didn't know I was dreaming. Do you understand? It was entirely lucid, but like... Like waking up in another world. Except I didn't think of it as another world. Ugh. Does this make any sense? You had a super lifelike dream where you didn't know you were dreaming, but you were still lucidly in control? Sounds pretty rad to me. I'm sure it would have been, except for the whole end of the world apocalypse bit in the dream. Yeah, that's... A little disconcerting. <laughs> okay, now you've got my attention. <laughs> so like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did the day, that day felt like the real thing. Every smell, every sound, every color, every touch. It's important you know that. I wasn't acting like I would in a dream. I didn't know it was a dream. Heavy. There was no warning, no build-up, nothing. Just between one moment and the next, the TV had turned to the emergency alert system. And this voice that sounded like it had been recorded in the 60s told us we were under attack. Were you alone? Yeah, I, ha I had had a really long day at the office, so I had sworn off all social contact for the evening. I had the TV on in the background, just as noise. Wait, what? The office? You mean you've got some kind of real adult person job in this dream of yours? Yeah, actually, at the college student admissions office. Hey, don't sound so surprised. I am going to graduate in just a few months, you know. Uh-huh. 
With a BA in English lit. Shut up. Such skill with words. Anyway, what happened next? Like I said, the TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system. Jack the volume all the way up too. I didn't even know they could do that. The broadcast told us we were under attack right now, and that we needed to get to the get needed to get to shelter. That we had less than thirty minutes before the bombs hit. Jesus, sounds scary. At first, I didn't believe it. I switched the channel, but they were all the same. And then the sirens started. Tornado sirens? What sirens? I don't know. And I knew things were serious. So what did you do? I would go online to find out what was going on. Did you try calling someone? Like your parents? Of course I tried, but it, it was futile. The phone network was completely overworked. But the net still worked fine. So what'd you find? The net was still working. But the bandwidth was severely lacking. The major news networks were either down or overloaded. But all the big search engines defaulted to some kind of government site in super simple HTML. That kind of confirmed it was the real deal. Isn't the net supposed to be some kind of DARPA invention anyway? It actually is a DARPA invention. Wouldn't be surprised if they had some kind of system in place to take it over if need be. Well, they hadn't taken it over. You could still go wherever you wanted. Facebook still worked. <laughs> Apocalypse proof servers? Nice. It was insane. I tried to get in touch with my brother. He's the only one who's even got an account, but there was no reply. I spammed my aunts and sent an email to my mother, but I don't know. It felt like I needed to find someone right there and then. And? A group chat. It was spreading through our social network like wildfire. Someone had found the closest old fallout shelter that was actually still operational down on the third. People were going there, just grabbing all they could and running before the bombs fell. So what happened next? You know, I did find you online. That must have been useless. I'm all the way over in Old Blighty, unless things were different in your dream. No, you were still in the UK. The bombs had already started falling there. We... You... You... Disappeared. There was nothing more to do. It was only a dream out. Sure. So then what? Sunday, September 18th, cloudy. 919. Chess? Who's that? My, um, boyfriend. I mean, I, I don't have a boyfriend, but in my dream I did. Wait up. Tell me more about this sudden new boyfriend of yours. I thought you weren't in the dating scene. Actually, I've been thinking about putting myself out there. Like, maybe some online dating or something, although I'm kind of afraid to check OK Cupid right now. What if there's a guy named Chess? <laughs> Good icebreaker. Hi, I'm Alice. I dreamed about you last night. You were my end of the world buddy. Funny. Aren't I just... Were you saying about Chess? What kind of name is that anyway? I wasn't really. I mean, yeah, he was pretty hot, I guess, and smart and into me. What more can you ask for? I can see you blushing all the way over here. Maybe I should check my OK Cupid profile, actually. So, what did your boyfriend think? Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was a pre recorded network busy message. But the net still worked, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our communications in chat anyway. And? And he wasn't online. Kind of a dumb idea anyway, I guess. Okay, what was your plan? The broadcast kept saying to stay indoors, to keep all windows and doors closed, stuff like that. Was it realistic of you to think you could stay in the apartment? Realistic? It wasn't like I had been through a lot of apocalypses before. I'm not sure what constitutes realistic. I had enough food in my cupboards to last me a little while, so at least I had that going for me. Oh yeah, and then I had my trusty radio, of course. I tried it and it worked. It was sending out the same emergency broadcast as the TV, and you called me a Luddite. <laughs> you got me there. So what did you do? Uh... 
Oh shoot, that's hard. Do I go outside? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, that shelter is going to have a lot of people coming in out at home. I have food, but I don't know. We'll go to the fallout shelter. The old fallout shelter was down on 3rd. It wasn't far. Close enough to walk me. Did you think to bring anything? Oh, right, yeah. I grabbed the biggest bat I had, a backpack. People always called it magic. You could fit so much stuff into it. Bigger on the inside and all that. Help. Well, uh, radio? Flashlight, map. I can put those in my hands. Spare clothes. Sleeping bag. Uh, what is university ID except it's no longer for a student but for staff doubles on as an electronic key card well shoot I want to keep my radio with me take food alright oh oh interesting Alice majored in English, which is not the most immediately useful skill in the post-apocalypse. Career stat is part skill, part representative or position in academia, which might be less than useful in the post-apocalypse. Might, however, open up some interesting venues of approach. Social life. A social Alice is likely to make more friends and influence dating. Survival. That seems useful. Alright. Exit inventory. Well, go on. What was it like? Did you run into trouble? You could say that. God, that shelter. Oh, that's what I was nervous about. <laughs> no. So, I headed towards the shelter from my apartment. I'll admit, I was still kind of hoping it was all just some kind of big face false alarm, and by tomorrow, everything would be back to normal. Like an extreme version of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast. Actually, the panic that radio show caused was greatly exaggerated, probably by Welles himself, and it worked. We still remember it today. Great ad campaign. Guess that English lit degree is coming to some use, at least. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't really feel like it. I remember trying to think of words to describe the way the streets felt, the way the city sounded. Turmoil, chaos, anarchy, tumult, pandemonium. The capital of hell. Now who's got a degree in lit? Stop stalling. Yeah, it's just so fucking damn. Like I said, everything felt so, felt so real. The panic in the streets, the accidents everywhere with no emergency responders showing up and the ever-present siren. It was like everyone walked with their eyes to the sky just expecting to see a flash. Did you make it to the shelter okay? The shelter was actually in the basement of a bar. They used it as storage, which was handy since there was a door towards the street. But there are no signs or anything like that anymore. I just knew about it from the Facebook conversation. Okay, wait. Isn't that the bar you always go to? The rad bar? Oh, the background's changing. <laughs> yeah. Go on, Alice. Did you get in? I went to what I thought was a side door. It wasn't the kind of alleyway I'd usually hang out in. I could just imagine junkies and hobos sleeping among those trash bags anyway. The suspense is killing me. So I knocked on the door and then immediately tried to handle. It was locked. Nothing happened for a while. And then the door opened. Just a bit. And she stuck her head out. She... The bitch queen. She was this redhead chick who had taken charge of everything in there. She was the one who originally posted about the place, so I guess she felt she owned it somehow. She stood in there before me, looking me over, and 
that basically said work gold. Like it was an exclusive club. I can't believe they just keep you out for no good reason. Was it actually full? <laughs> Not a chance. There's a sign on the door that said capacity 100. There's just no way there was 100 people in there already. I said as much. She didn't reply. I guess you didn't just let it be at that. I tried talking my way in. You can't just leave me out here, and so forth. She just repeated that they were full, that there wasn't enough food for any more, that I should try to find some other place to hide. Stone cold bitch indeed. I tried telling her I wouldn't be a burden, I had brought food. I opened my bag and showed her. You're nicer than I would be, what did she say? I wasn't being nice, I was being desperate. I was trying to figure out the rules of the sun new reality. She hesitated, then she said, all right, but you'll have to share. A bribe, huh? How tempting. What was your answer? <laughs> but it was just you. Yeah, but, like, in theory, there'd be others than just me. Did she buy it? She looked behind me and back at me. And then repeated, I'm sorry, but we're full. What'd you do? So she let me slip in, closing the door behind me with a bang. Ooh. Barely had time to get my bearings before she started taking command again, telling me to hurry up and to empty my bags. Empty your bags. She had some kind of notion she should be in charge of the supplies. What did you say to that? Asked her about it. Seems reasonable. Go away, notification. Sorry. I wasn't there to fight. I just wanted to get through. So, what? Did she rob you of everything you owned or what? I was ready to start arguing with her about that. Politely, of course. But it turned out she just wanted to take inventory. She very carefully wrote down everything we had with us, from clothes to food to blankets. Huh. I'm not saying she wasn't prissy about it, but I understood. Everyone was stressed out. What about the others in there? Were they happy to be bossed around by her? I think most of them were too shell-shocked to think about that. Someone was in charge. That was enough for most. That sounds post-apocalyptic to me. Did you make any new friends? Mainly old friends. I hadn't been the first there. We mingled. Did she leave you alone afterwards? The place had maybe 20 people in it, us included, but she stayed away from most of the rest of us, so yeah, she did. Were you the last to arrive? No, soon after us there were some others. These she let in without trouble, embracing one of them. This big, burly guy with a motorcycle jacket. Someone you knew? Actually, yeah, Ray was his name. He lived pretty close. I mainly knew him for his love for motorcycles. I had no idea he knew the bitch queen. But the place was still empty. Yeah. Soon after, there was another knock. And this time, the bitch queen tried to do the same thing she did with me. What did you do? I protested, naturally. Brave of you to speak up. What did you say? I tried appealing to her humanity and to her common sense. What else could I do? But she wouldn't listen. She kept repeating we were full to, to the people outside. Did you just let that stand? The look she gave me told me to fuck off right then and there. So you just back down. No, fuck her. <laughs> Damn right. When I raised my voice at her, she turned red. What was your approach? I tried pushing my way in between, but she just pushed me back. Then she called for Ray. Suddenly I found myself alone, surrounded by a whole bunch of rather unkind gentlemen. You bit off a, more, a bit more than you could chew. Yeah, you could say that. She gave me an ultimatum. Step the fuck down right now, or leave. What did you do? Oh. Damn it. Ah, I'm gonna back down. I know it's just a dream, but geez. 
what she was doing was just not right. I know. But I was afraid. I didn't want to be thrown out. I understand. Still, it boils my blood. Hmm. Well, anyway, she and her friends closed the door, made sure it was kept closed. I really, really hope whoever was left outside actually left to find other shelter, because when the bombs started to drop... Ah, uh, yeah. The bombs. We were all underground. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> I hate this. I mean, I'm glad I stayed, but... Oh, Jesus. It was filled with barrels and barrels of beer and other drinks, but at least there was light for a while. So it actually happened. The nuclear war. Yeah, we had a radio with us, and we all sat clustered around it. Oh. The music changed. At first there were sporadic reports that the U.S. missile defense system was working, and that it was shooting down the incoming warheads, but then the signal turned off. And after a few min moments later, we felt the rumble. Holy shit, were you okay? The shelter did what it was designed to do, yeah. Although at one point, there was a terrible sound just above, and the shelter was briefly filled with dust. I was pretty sure we were all dead. People were screaming, babies were cry crying. The lights flickered and died, and it was the end. Holy shit, your subconscious wasn't joking around. We subsisted on candles and flashlights and waited for the radio to come back. And it did after a while. What did it say? Just about expected fallout patterns. It sounded very recorded, but I guess there had to be someone alive up there still clicking the buttons. But even that ended after a little while. Wow. Okay, so how long did you stay down there? Well, the radio said there was a cloud of radioactive ash coming our way within 24 hours and told us every, and told everyone to stay inside until further notice, then it died. So, I guess you stayed at least 24 hours then. Of course. Tuesday, September 20th, clear skies. Oh, this is... This is the day in the dream, then. Okay. Of course, the problem came when we tried to leave. What? Well, the shelter was underground, underneath a big trap door. And the house above, it had apparently collapsed on the trap door. We tried to open it, pushed and pushed, but it wouldn't budge. Damn, that's like a real nightmare buried alive. Well, we had food down here for a while, and if we started drinking beer with our meals, we could probably stretch it out for weeks. Of course, then we'd all be kind of drunk all the time, too, but what then? Maybe there'd be a rescue. Maybe. But what if there wasn't? What did the others think? Ray and his queen wanted to sit tight and wait for help. A few of the others wanted to find an alternative way out. Maybe through one of the ventilation shafts. A third option would be to keep working on the trap door. It opened out, but if you removed the hinges and got it to collapse inward, and then dug up through the debris, the radioactive debris, the radioactive debris. Anyway, people were getting very antsy, so it was time to make some kind of decision. So, what did you do? All right, guys. Well, I am gonna leave this here. This is fascinating. This is super cool. I can't wait to see where the story keeps going. So I am gonna call it a night for now. Tell me what you guys think I should do in the comments down below. I'm really interested to see what your opinion of this is. But anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening and I will talk to you all later. Bye.